so um, very happy to be part of this uh, very special event and uh, thank you for 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 attending this uh, this session um, I'd like to continue uh, the uh, the previous um, thoughts that uh, our friends from Guatemala has uh, because we're also wanting, wanting to talk about curricular materials and especially have a focus on textbooks for the K-12 sphere. Uh, you may agree with me that open textbooks is one of the most important trends in open education in OER, uh, but in the K-12 sphere, we have not uh, leveraged uh, what, for example, is happening with open textbooks in, in, in higher education. We have exciting projects and, and, and very robust. Uh, just a small example is the Open Textbook Network that has more than 800 textbooks. We can only talk about a few projects uh, uh, related to Open Textbook in K-12. So I think something we, we have with, especially me, I've been waiting for, and I think the time has come. And um, you may be asking, time come has come for what? Uh, you can also agree with me that all of this um, pandemia context and the educational disruption has just changed the, the, the educational landscape. And, and I also want to say that uh, in Chile, it's, it, this, this uh, context it has, was also um, preceded by a, social, a big social outrage which also generated a lot of complications and disruptions for the, for the educational. So it's been a very strange year for all of us. And, and, and of course, it's facing many challenges. Uh, but also we, we can look at this context also as an opportunity. So I think uh, the time has come to rethink about curricular resources. I think we need to, you know, have an, an, an another uh, reflection about what we're doing with uh, K-12 resources and how we can do better. And, and not only what types of, of, and how we integrate those resources, we also need to think about the provision of how we are having access uh, of these curricular resources. And this is something very special for my country, but I know it, it's something uh, that you will find it familiar in your countries is that the open the the textbook markets are are very special and, and we in Chile have a lot of problems uh, with the private and pl public markets. Uh, the public market is very highly concentrated on very few companies, most of them being foreign companies. So they have kind of displaced the local uh, industry, the local in publishing industry. And in the private sector, we have the same uh, having very abusive uh, po uh, cost policies. And, uh, and, and when I say abuse, I, I'm, not, I'm not short. Um, these same companies that sell the, the textbook to the, to the governments, uh, in, the pop, in, the, in the private market, they cost more than 30 times on average 30 times, it, you can really, it, it's something that of course uh, makes a lot of uh, uh, noise uh, around that. So I think we need to reshape the markets and, and build some regulations that we can do a lot more better than we are doing now. And also I think we are in the moment where, uh, where OER has come a long way We've, we've matured, and I think we have a good set of tools that have uh, that are very highly developed, and I think we can harness. Just like we saw, we can do it with the Media Wiki. Um, we're going to have a, here uh, a proposal of, of, of other tools uh, that I think are on the same uh, trend. And um, but first of all, I think one of the major challenges has to do with the negative impact of learning, and and when we see the possible learning loss that all this uh, pandemic um, context has created, we, we have to be really concerned. There is a, um, the World Bank with the Ministry of Chile just got out about a month and a half ago, a, uh, a research study 
that tries to predict the, the, the learning loss. And the results are stunning. Uh, on average, our students will be losing more than 88% of the prior learning in the, in, in the prior year. And of course, that's, that's even harder in the poorest uh, sex, uh, sector of our population. But not only the poor, also the high, the the highest, those that have most, the more privileges or, or more resources to to keep uh, uh, the learning process on, even in the in in in, in the richest uh, sectors of the of, of this of our society, are also having a big loss. This is something that shouldn't surprise us. Learning loss has we've been dealing with that uh, with different. Uh, um, sectors, for example, with migrants that have some type of have uh, disruptions or refugees that have an uh, educational disruption, we, we, we have evidence that we can update this learning loss. Um, but we also have to uh, remember that the learning loss is something that happens every year, especially on summers. The summer break we, there's strong evidence that shows how the learning loss uh, in, of the summer break can be up to 30%. And, and actually our teachers have to, every st the start of the year have to devote four, six weeks just to level what the prior learning is. So, so this is something that shouldn't concern us, but a whole year, which is our case in the summer hemisphere, a whole year of missing, uh, having the schools closed will have a very high impact. And we're gonna have to face that challenge. And one thing that's very important to know about that is that this emergency online education that we, are, we have to transition uh, doesn't solve the problem. Uh, even in the, in the richest schools, you can have very high percentage of learning loss. So I think this is one of the huge challenges we have to face in this post-pandemic world. The other big challenge I think is related to the curriculum. I think we have to harness this opportunity to rethink what our students should be learning uh, we have very saturated, content-driven curriculums that we have to kind of rethink about them, because we don't have the same the the same educational structures that we did in the past. We're going to have to prioritize goals, or maybe nuclearize uh, our curriculum goals. When we talk about nuclearize, it's like joining different subjects in core areas of learnings so we can have a multidisciplinary approach. And that approach should be not centered on content, but on skills um, as, as uh, we approach this post-pandemic uh, context. So how can we harness this, uh, this challenge of rethinking the uh, curriculum materials and brought it as an opportunity. One of the things that the post pandemic has shown us is that without, with the schools closed, printed textbooks have been very subutilized. Um, and, and they have been subutilized because we have made this transition from face to face uh, education to this digital learning. So we, we're kind of re. Uh, uh, re reframing our resources for uh, for um, digital resources, but we but we cannot just leave this the, the printed textbooks because uh, the digital resources are very different from the printed one for, for you know the hard um, copy the hard copy textbooks, and and we should not we have not have to deny the, the printed textbook because it has very high impact on learning. We cannot say the same for digital resources. So I think we have to rethink how to integrate the printed and the, and the, and the digital resources. We have to find a way in how we can uh, 
uh, have a good integration of both. And, and if we look at what the publishers are doing, you know, the proprietary uh, learning resources companies, uh, they have already moved on. And they basically what they're doing is creating paywalls for curricular digital content, plus what I call a Christmas tree, just, just a bunch of other digital services with, that go from, you know, parents uh, or uh, digital citizenship uh, and support in, in, in many other extracurricular areas, et cetera. But the main issue is that they are, they are you know, building this paywall so they can get revenue from, uh, from the digital content that they were doing. So this is not a wild idea. The, the private sector is already doing this. And we have seen that uh, ministries are trying to think of, of new ways of related to the, to the textbook in K-12. For example, in Chile, we, the, there's been uh, the first scale of the textbook. The textbook is a product from Discovery Education, you know, the English uh, transnational. And we've seen that uh, the ministry is promoting this interactive digital textbook, which I think is something that we need to, to be thinking about. And I think in, in what we are doing is that we're building an open interactive textbook just like the private sector is doing, but this is going to be an open one, um, over these two wonderful tools. Uh, first of all, uh, Pressbooks, uh, which, which is a book uh, creator uh, tool that is very cool. It has, um, it has different outputs in different types of formats, and it has this multi-infrastructure which builds a textbook within one uh, it's like one context. It's built over WordPress, which is very popular. So it's very cool to, to work around it. And the interactive content, we're approaching it building through H5P, which is also very wonderful. If you don't uh, know these two tools, I really strongly enhance you to, to try them on. And, um, and we are building this open interactive textbook for K-12. Uh, through the Open Textbook Success Program, which is a very cool uh, program. Um, this is led by the Rebus community, which is like the nonprofit branch of Pressbooks. So it's very neat. It has a very community-driven approach, so it's very compelling to... So, so my high stakes uh, of building an online interactive textbook for K-12 we're trying it here and uh, hopefully we can share results uh, soon. Uh, we're building that uh, with another public institution called the Council of Transparency. So, um, so we're, very, we're very excited uh, to, to try this on. So please, if you haven't uh, look at Pressbooks, look at H5P. But we have uh, other challenges not only related to online, uh, online uh, products, we also have to be thinking about other types of product. Why? Because connectivity, is, it's also a huge challenge, especially if we're thinking how to migrate, you know, face-to-face -face learning um, setup to online. Uh, and Chile is, it doesn't do very bad on that. We're ranked 33, and, and we have a lot of penetration of mobile te te telephony in our country, even same as it is in Singapore, which is, you know, very, uh, very algorithm uh, society and, and government. But if we have, if we take a, a closer look related to connectivity in Chile, you see this blue sector of the pie that we're talking about 8% of the population in Chile uh, have full connectivity, but that's not the same story for the rest of the, of the, of the population, more than 90%. If we take the orange pie, C2 and C3, we have limitations related to connectivity where we have mostly, um, where we have a, 
more limited plans or in or we have prepaid mobile plans which we know you know they 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 consume very fast and uh and, and in these sectors more than 20 percent do not have access at home this is very important because uh, uh educational purposes through uh, through the internet you need to have good connectivity mainly through broadband or or, or fiber, and if we look at the low sectors of segments of our, uh, more than fifty percent of our populations have very restrictive connectivity. More than seventy percent of this sector has prepaid mobile mobile plans, and and forty percent do not have home access. So, we have a lot of huge challenges if we want to move our educational settings in K-12 for, uh, um, in Chile, in, in, in almost 90% of our populations, five million people do not have uh, internet access at home. And, and we have a bunch of people, 3.4 million, just completely unconnected. So this is a, a huge challenge. And if we look at Latin America and even countries like India, those challenges are just very, very big. Uh, almost 50% of, of our children in, in Latin America come from unconnected homes. So how we, can we include these people that do not have the right connectivity for educational purposes? Here's another bit uh, that we are working on. And um, if the online strategy is not feasible in our context, uh, we need for alternative means of delivery. And I think offline resources uh, is, a, is a great idea, especially when we have excellent tools. Let me present you, and maybe you already heard about it, is Colibri. Colibri is just a wonderful tool. Uh, it, it's, it's a tool where you have access to learning content channels that are built on top of OER. Um, and the good thing is that we have very rich interactive content. content. For example, All Caught Can Academy in, in various languages is implemented on Colibri so we can get the Can Academy offline. Um, and we and we can uh, also have access to other very rich resources like FET and another, uh, for example, uh, a Mexican called Proyecto Descartes with very rich uh, OERs so we can not only access, but not only can we access this, uh, this we can also build learning content channels through an excellent uh, tool, uh, from Calibri called this Calibri Studio, which is which is a very interesting uh, tool for this rethinking of the, of our curriculum. Um, basically, the the Calibri Studio is a, it, it's a tool so you where you can build um, whatever channel with whatever content on the Calibri library you can use, and um, we are now doing. We're now doing, a, 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 through a, a Creative Commons grant, uh, we're building a math channel uh, with uh, OER resources uh, from fifth grade to 10th grade. Um, so we're very excited about that. We're finishing that work. All these resources we're building in this, it's aligned to the prioritized official curriculum with this, which is uh, one of the response that uh, that our government has uh, to to uh, confront this uh, pandemic context. And uh, the good news is that um, this content channel will be distributed by the Ministry of Education to access points, content access point for rural schools where Colibri will be pre-installed. So we're gonna feed that with our channel, which is totally aligned with the, uh, with the, 
with the official uh, curriculum. So we're very excited about that because rural schools are uh -huh. very, very interesting. Just uh, one, uh, <laughs> just 10 seconds. Okay. So um, we're going to continue that work, uh, working for a math channel for Honduras. And that will be my presentation. Sorry for interrupting you, Marcela. 